<laughs> Hello. I hope your summer is going well. Um, I'm excited to tune in today. We're tuning in from Couch Bay here on Vancouver Island uh, in BC in Canada. This is Diana Robinson and I'm MC Starman and we're here to talk to you about the new moon in Virgo. But before we talk about that, how how you been feeling this full moon and then that's Mars Uranus conjunction? Wow, that's been a lot, isn't it? It was a lot. Yeah, that Mars Uranus was on the first of August. And then the full moon not long after. I'm I'm yeah, my inner ground is shaking and I was saying I feel very stretched. Having a hard time putting words and the feelings I've been dealing with the last few weeks, but stretched is one of them. Stretched thin. Well, the sun's been in Leo also. Uh, the sun in Leo, I think we're all pretty self-absorbed. Huh? Yeah. It's not, it's 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 difficult to really know how we're all doing. You know, it's the height of summertime and we've just gone through um, Luke Nasa, you know, so it's a big shift, you know, it's a, it's a shift into fall mode, harvest time, but still very Leo, huh? And so what we're going to see at the new moon there, or before the new moon, is the shift into Virgo, and that's going to be exciting. So today's video, so this is the Healer and the Dreamer Astrology, and... And today we're going to be talking about the Virgo new moon. Like we said, it's on August 27th at 1.17 a.m. So that's the night of Friday, early Saturday morning, the last Saturday of the month. And then, Martin, you've been contemplating working with words a lot, like you always do in a wonderful way. And I love your phrase that you've been working with. Where do we go from here? Well, the where do we go from here for me has been a really kind of a dominant um, part of my studies over um, the uh, last um, the last month or so, you know, like um, we've talked about, you know, what what you know, what's next, you know, and I think that we're all kind of preparing, you know, we've been studying that Saturn uh, Uranus square building in the sky, you know, that's our fourth wave of it. Every time it's been close. We've been going through major crisis. We kind of know we're not done. So where do we go from here? You know, what's next? Where do we go from here? And so uh, that's been really dominating my studies for quite a bit. Um, and so we'll look at that a little more. So this uh, Virgo new moon on the 27th of August at 1.17 a.m., so we have some interesting thing, but uh, first, uh, how do you feel the sun uh, uh, and moon in Virgo yourself? Yeah, the Virgo topic. Well, I'm excited for Virgo season. I feel like I've been excited for Virgo season all summer, and maybe I'm a little less excited than I was about a month ago, because I love Virgo season for many things. It's got that strong harvest quality. Um, the analyzer, the ability to pull the wheat from the shaft and make sure you're really I look at Virgo as the ability to prioritize and see what's important but then there's also that deeper quality of um the virgin the word virgin doesn't do it justice but this purity the purity well it's the uh you know the ancient version of Virgo Liz Green talks about Virgo being um the the pure essence of the feminine that even though it repeatedly gives birth, it still remains pure, you know? Mm. So the Virgos, you know, in, in ancient history were independent women who were very, very strong and independent. And it would take the returning warriors from battle and heal them and have their children and then send them out to battle completely unattached you know they were the keeper of the temple the keeper of the wisdom the keeper of the medicine so so that's a whole other way of looking at the archetype of Virgo or the myth of Virgo so we have a sun and moon in Virgo and that's ruled by Mercury now Mercury is getting really close to Mercury retrograde right the, the Mercury is like 20 um, some degree away from the sun. So Mercury will be turning retrograde really soon. And in it's in a trine to Mars and that Mars, Mercury, sun, moon. You know, this is um, 
this is very communicative. It's very, you know, Mars in Gemini is very communicative. Um, Mars enters into Gemini, will be in Gemini for six months. So we'll talk lots about Mars in Gemini and then Mercury about to go retrograde and then Virgo, you know, there's a real questioning with this new moon, you know, okay, what's going on? You know, what, what we you know, where, where do we go from here? Um, also, then there's this uh, Mercury, Mars, Pluto, Grand Trine in air signs. So that's very communicative and Pluto, death and rebirth. Huh? So there's a certain intensity about you know, Grand Trine, I was just reading yesterday about, you know, what Liz Green says about Grand Trines and how um, um, Grand Trines can be really, really good or they can be really, really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it depends on, you know, one can hide behind a Grand Trine mm -hmm. and be in denial about one's community. In this case, an air Grand Trine is really highly communicative. Uh, Pluto is out of out of out of element there, so it, Pluto is in Earth still, but it's still included in the Grand Trine and Mercury in Libra and Mars in Gemini. That makes for a very um, very engaging and communicative uh, angular relationship. Huh? Yeah, Mercury is really going to rule this new moon for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And then Mercury being in the sign of Venus, then we go to Venus, and then Venus is in a Saturn, Uranus, and now Saturn and Uranus are within two degrees of the exact square. So you see the line is thickening now, and this is a very, so Venus and Leo are our inner princess wants to be seen and yet it's really restricted you know by saturn and aquarius and then that conjunction of uranus and the north node you know there's something really fated you know a lot of people are going through really profound changes facing you know and a lot of people are facing a lot of anguish about what's ahead and what they have to do in order to adjust so this full this new moon uh, you know in that venus saturn uranus t square that's really going to be felt and then the last thing that i pointed out uh, you know of course mars is going to be in gemini and we'll talk lots about that and mercury retrograde but the last thing is uranus neptune and pluto um so uranus Neptune and Pluto in that triangle. Now, this triangle is very interesting, and we'll do a video just on that. Probably going to talk about it a lot. It's going to be active like this for the next few months, and then every year from now till 2029, and that triangle will keep coming back and intensifying mm -hmm. i think in 2025 and 2026 and 2027 it dominates those three years really really intensely and by 2025 have they've all switched to the masculine next signs that's in yes in 2025 Pluto will have finally come into Aquarius and then Neptune into Aries and Uranus into Gemini. So yeah, we're not done talking about that. And we've talked about it a little bit, but uh, we're getting into detail of it, but uh, it's really highly constellated with that grand trine and kind of a grand kite. That grand kite here that we see comes back um, during the eclipse season. And so we're not done seeing those constellations. So uh, it bodes, um, it's certainly uh, going to be quite interesting. Huh? How do you, how do you feel it in the people? You know, you're, you're, you have a very social job. You, you work at the, the farm, the community farm store and you deal with, with clients, uh, supply medicines and, and, and like that. How do you feel the mood out there? Uh, 
there is definitely like you're saying a self-involvement people have family the family's been a big focus it's definitely leo season you can see that creativity and family plus the weather has been so nice we've been blessed to uh go to um to different uh beach events and festivals mm -hmm. and like that so people are quite socially engaged huh yeah, I, I feel like people were more socially engaged a few months ago. There's still a lot of social contact happening, but there also has been um, a lot of sickness, to be honest, or at least maybe that's because of the field I'm in. But I see a lot of people are sick or having to lay low and then they don't lay low. Their body kind of tells them pretty quickly. Uh, so there's this this inner calling despite the leo extroversion that we kind of portray with leo there is this time of really being focused on yourself and tending to what your needs are right now mm -hmm. um, that i can see and a lot of people are, are having that big pull and need to take care of themselves on a different level right now and we have virgo season around the corner i'm sure that'll be a whole new octave of that because virgo is all about self-care and well, also really? Virgo is a very intense time of the year, right? The school is coming mm -hmm. back on where, you know, Jeez. it's it's Structure. also the time of, for canning and for preserving food and, and bringing mm -hmm. everything in and cleaning up everything from summer because fall is about to arrive, you know, so it usually tends to be a very detail-oriented earth you know we haven't seen an earth sign you know we had uh, we had um, mm, 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 uh, you know gemini you know aired and cancer watered and leo fire and then finally we're back to uh, virgo into an earth sign so getting bit back grounded after all the excitement of summer um you know and gearing up into fall Virgo really brings it back down and it's a very also very busy day but a time but you know making order into things is really important um and and as we're going through that then the Saturn Uranus square is building in intensity and I think that that's what's really uh you know of concern to a lot of us mm -hmm. i know we've been looking at it and so what does that mean and how do we deal and then at the moon, full moon and the new moon we're gonna have venus in that t square as we've shown in the chart so so this is um what i've been talking about in terms of um this uh where do we go from here? You know, so this, where do we go from here? Really big need, I feel myself for, and we talked about this earlier too, regaining a sense of sovereignty in our lives. Uh, the insulating effect of a spiritual and creative practice from the dangers of psychic infection. So, what does that mean, regaining a sense of sovereignty over our lives? Jung talked about this a lot in his work, and he talked about how the religious focus or the religious attitude, the spiritual attitude, is a natural antidote to the infection of nationalism and all the different kinds of isms that we suffer from. You know, he calls them psychic epidemics. You know, he looks at, uh, he, he uses the word apotropaic. Apotropaic means a ritualistic approach a, 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 and a prayerful approach to life. You know, so regaining a sense of sovereignty in our life is to reclaim the dominance of spirit over materialistic, scientific materialism, right? Regaining, realizing that really that I'm connected to spirit is way stronger than the nonsense that's going on in the news right now, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, we're thinking crisis, you know, if we, if we allow the collective uh, to narrate, and then we're freaking out, whether it's economically, socially, politically, you know, all of these agendas, all of these distractions, 
It, is spirit more important? Is my connection with spirit more important? And to me, that's what brings sovereignty over our lives. And, and, and that to me is the higher octave of expression of the Saturn Uranus square. Saturn being discipline, Uranus be, being the light bringer. You know, so we, we, we want to become the light bringer. We want to be good examples in the crisis. And most importantly, we don't want to get caught up in it. And so, uh, so then regaining a sense of sovereignty and learning the insulating effect of a spiritual and creative practice, it keeps me sane. You know, I like to say that um, staying sane in this day and age is a full-time job. You know, we one must have tools. Mm -hmm. So what are the tools that we use? The tool, tools that I use, and you can share some of the tools, but we share a lot of the same ones. Uh, a dream practice is really important in a very union perspective, you know, working with your dreams. I don't know about you guys, but my dreams have been very, very significant. And then I, I do uh, morning pages, you know, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron, really amazing book of a spiritual discipline. And I mix my dream practice with The Artist Way. And then there's prayers and rituals, you know, doing smudges. You know, somebody um, was looking in the book of practice, you know, why is, you know, offering incense or burning Palo Santo, you know, it it becomes... It becomes the, the fire and the smoke. Our prayers are taken to heaven with the smoke, you know? Mm -hmm. And so so then 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 to have little practices, uh, then the process, uh, uh, the transformative process of making art. <laughs> so important to, and then you use the word active imagination. So he took the dream material and he made art from what came up in the dreams and engaged in a theurgical manner, in a devotional manner with the contents that was manifested in his dreams. And so then now we're regaining a sovereignty over our destiny because we're focusing on things that are just frankly more important than all of the noise out in the material world. When it comes to it, real change will happen, not on an economic, not on a social, not on a uh, political level, but it will happen on a spiritual level. And that's where we must engage as individual and put uh, our energy in regaining a sense of sovereignty over our lives. Good, healthy habits, huh? You're here. Eating well, exercise, minimize screen time, whether mm -hmm. it's your phone or your computer or your television or Netflix. Those are just distraction that keeps you from using your time in creative manners, you know, your studies, you know, because mm -hmm. your your dedication to becoming all that you are, that's more important than the madness that's going on. Spending time in nature, garden, hike, swim. How does that all sound to you? What are the tools that you use? What is important to you? I use a lot of these, definitely. Yeah. Um, dream practice, the artist way has been extremely helpful and life-changing and uh, even when I fall off the bandwagon with my daily pages, when I come back to them, it's it's so, I want to say it's holding and it brings me back to how you say that it's insulating. It is that feeling of like armoring up for the day or being present and fully present with yourself and your process. And so when you meet the world, you're able to be more present for that as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. How huh? I was, we're, we're, you know, and then again, that's the that's the real focus of Virgo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Virgo being the the medicine gatherer, um, and and um, so you were talking about your own practices, and then and then we can talk about also, of course, uh, you know, it's 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 as we didn't write it down because we're so dedicated to it ourselves. But that's why that's what a study astrology. of astrology. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and can be yeah. so valuable because it gives you an objectivity mm -hmm. to the times that we're going through and it allows you again to gain sovereignty over your life experience you know you're not being you're 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 responding to archetypal structures that are very easy to understand well not easy to understand but they're very clear and getting a sense of meaning allows us the the detachment that's necessary not to take all of the noise seriously mm -hmm. oh my god is there ever a lot of noise these days no yes if you're if you're listening and watching it there's a lot the astrology practice is really grateful. I'm very grateful for for creating that buffer because it also keeps me in reminder that everything is always moving. So this too shall pass. And when these waves of thoughts or energies or things come up, allows for more, more able to be present with it, knowing that it will pass. And there's probably something in there that's trying to teach me something versus being succumbed by it and feeling like I need to run the other way or drowning <laughs> or that it's the truth of reality now and it's forever going to be this way it can be a very limiting thing but well understanding we this can be dramatic <laughs> uh, well, well, well I think we're, we tend to be dramatic as individuals and in, in living in a dramatic society but I think drama is good like uh, like uh, Julia Cameron says you keep drama to the page you know and, <laughs> yeah. and that that really is helpful but um um interesting how um, we're all going through the same thing together, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it allows for some collectivity in it, too. Oh, what happened to my share here? I'm not sure. There's a piece I like how you keep saying um, sovereignty, where we have this Uranus-Saturn axis. Uranus and Taurus, to me, is about sovereignty. And sovereignty over the body, going to Virgo in the body. That's what we were going to go through is, uh, so, so me, uh, you know, herbs and medicines to support us through this Virgo time. What do you got for us? Mm -hmm. um, well, my training's in holistic nutrition. And so there's a few things that as I go throughout the years, putting more of my astrology and nutrition love together, I keep seeing this beautiful correlation that's been well established in different areas of the world. So Virgo is also known to rule our solar plexus and our liver. Thinking about our liver like the thing that analyzes the blood and is sorting the blood. So making hormones, breaking down hormones, breaking down the crap food that you may have eaten or the different nutrients that need to be broken into smaller nutrients so your body can use them. The liver is a really good Virgo archetype within our body. Um, and it's also got an affinity for the skin. So the Virgo is connected with our liver, our digestion, but also our skin health. So if you're having skin health things come up right now, it could be a good time or Virgo can really bring those things to the surface if there is skin issues coming up. The herbs that Virgo works well with and helps to balance out is skullcap for that nervous system, fennel, dill, endive, and licorice. These are all supportive of the liver and our skin. We, we, we uh, this year, we did, made a discovery in our garden and we grew... Uh chicory oh and really bitter yeah. would that chicory go into that as well because right now it's just so beautiful right now we make big salads just out of chicory and it's like whoa i love it we do a salad with chicory and blueberries i have to look again i actually think chicory might be part of leo oh yeah yeah oh, i think yeah. it might be on our last video it's definitely come up in one of our videos before but i feel like it was in the last one interesting we're in leo season at the moment really loving i'm going to grow chicory every year from now on good and then good so it's cell salt number seven so tell us about the salt yes yeah. so then there's the 12 base tissue salts of every human body and virgo rules cell salt number seven or cali sulf uh so this is a potassium sulfate compound and it's really good for again supporting the skin supporting the liver um if there's skin blemishes or dandruff or psoriasis starting um, anything where the skin is irritated and hot the cali salt is going to help to soothe and heal that and that is again associated with the liver so something in the liver is too hot and needing some cooling or some support and it's in all the work that it does to support you 
So then we would want to extrapolate that. You say chicken pox there, so <laughs> probably monkey pox also, you know, any kind yeah. of support to deliver for sure. and you're and you're maintaining a really strong health in your skin, huh? Mm -hmm. We also see this liver uh, Virgo season as a time where people start preparing or starting to do their fall cleansing. So it being a really good time to detox or cleanse in the turning of the seasons. Virgo is a pivotal turning of the seasons. Things are getting colder and damp. And so it can be a really good time to support the liver that way too. And then this would be a tissue salt that would really support the detoxification there. Thank you for that, Day. Yeah, for uh, sure. uh, Dayana is a um, nutrition-focused holistic health coach. Mm -hmm. Dayana Robinson, if you want to reach out to her, um, day by day healing at Gmail. And then as we close out here, we're going to give you important dates to keep track. Mars enters into Gemini on August 21st. And that's super important this time because it's there for such a long time. So we're talking about Mars entering Gemini for about six to seven months. Alan and I are going to do a video on Mars and Gemini. Right. Fascinating, fascinating, um, you know, well, one, it allows us to study the Mars archetype mm -hmm. and the Gemini myth in mm -hmm. quite depth. So uh, tune in for that. But the Mars and Gemini, we'll, we're, we're going to be exploring that profoundly over the next seven months. Mercury is going to be entering its shadow period, uh, August 21st, so same day again, at 24 degrees Virgo. So what I mean by shadow period is that it will be going retrograde in September and then going direct again at the beginning of October. And so these degree points from the 21st of August on, we're going to see Mercury hit again. So it's going to hit that spot three times. So we're going to see that first week, or really I should say the last week or two of August, Whatever's coming up with Mercury in your psyche or in your chart, you're probably going to come back over two or three more times. So basically what this means is that if you have any planets between 24 degrees Virgo and about 16 degrees of Libra, mm -hmm. Mercury will be passing, will be making three exact passes to these planets. And so this is a very significant time uh, for uh, you know, Mercury retrograde is a review mode, you know, it allows us, you know, and it's coming at the turn of the season, we're turning into fall, making inventory, Vir you know, Mercury rules Virgo. So during the sun in Virgo, that we have a Mercury retrograde, and also Mars enters Gemini, Gemini is also ruled by Virgo. Mm -hmm. So this Virgo you know this this um this well for some time um um mercury returns uh back to 24 so then this virgo libra mercury retrograde we'll do a video on that too maybe uh to 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 really go through those archetypes what else are we going through well, the sun entering Virgo before a Virgo new moon could possibly happen. So we're nearing our end of our Leo season on the 24th of August. Sun will come fully into Virgo and be done with Leo. So those dates, 21st and the 24th there, because also on the 24th, Uranus turns retrograde. We're going to see a very significant shift of energy. Mm -hmm. You know, as the sun enters into Virgo, Mercury prepares this review mode. Mars enters into Gemini. Uranus turns retrograde. Uh, mm -hmm. And then... With Uranus turning retrograde too, that means that all those outer planets are all going to be retrograde at that point. So Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, they're all going to be retrograde. And that's going to also give a collective shift to this collective review process, which I feel like I've seen a lot in our society as we review what the hell happened the last couple of years <laughs> mm -hmm. and how we want to move forward from here and what do we learn what blessings came and what things do we maybe not want to do again so then mercury enters libra and the new moon both of them on the 27th and then mercury turns retrograde 
on the night. We'll keep you posted mm -hmm. uh, for more. This was a really fun video. How did you like this one, Day? I liked it a lot. Yeah. It uh, um, went pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm MC Starman. This is our um, um, Sol y Luna uh, inspiration video series. Um, but we have also the Healer and the Dreamer um, um, YouTube channel that we like you to subscribe to. We're up to 390 now, 390. Ooh. So we're nearing 400. We're, we're going to have a celebration when we hit 400, which should hit pretty soon here in the next month or two. Um, and uh, so the video channel is growing slowly, uh, but uh, surely. And we have many different a beautiful video um, playlist, um, one on uh, uh, the astrology of the Great Reset. We have um, mm, uh, the MC Starman interviews um, and uh, the MC Starman show. Anyway, check it out. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, you know, we usually include your questions on our uh, video so it'd be really really great to have some questions from you but just that you're following us and that you're uh, uh, passing on these videos and following our work uh, thank you for doing that everything I feel think, good yeah all right and thank you day enjoy the rest of your summer be well see you soon we'll see you for the full moon in pisces mm -hmm. bye bye